well as common order. After all, as Alan Watts has said, the etheric whispers go on all size scales, you know. Hal put off again since the arrow point field is filled with the vehicles of the ether at all size scales, all time frequencies everywhere. See, therefore you can create any type of universe that you want. Just put your consciousness in the one that you want. It connects automatically, you see, to the logic. So you will not create something that turns color every second, unless there is a scientific explanation for it. Well, today we are going to have a lesson on the, the structure of the photon. Well, when you make the etheric acceleration go, to a spiral. It will start to flow and get a tornadic shape like so. It goes faster as time goes on. The limit as <sighs> how about this? V limit approaches C, the value C, the speed of the light, you know. This is, you see, angel flies alongside photon. She flies at the vector in the direction of the photon is with the magnitude of C meters per second. And of course there is a constant acceleration running into the photon, but you see there due to the density of the local zero point field in our universe. We have a, a limitation because of the, like I say, gyroscopic inertia build up in the zero point field locally, the photon will reach a terminal velocity of C. Velocity terminal. That is the best term because you know it is a terminal. So what type of flow is the photon made of? We know it's final velocity of the tip, we do not know what happens in the body. Is it infinite? Is it finite? What is going on? For one thing the angel has revealed to us is that every photon has an infinite history to its beginning when it was created with a twin photon goes the other direction opposite in every way. So, we do not discuss that today. We discuss the structure of the pressure gradient of the local etheric gyroscopic density due to the buildup of the whirls and swirls inside the twisting photon. We talk about similar to, you know, this other term such as viscosity. You know, that is honey is high viscosity. Toothpaste is exotropic viscosity. Squeeze it out, sits there for a while, you know, not flowing. Honey, on the other hand, not exotropic, very viscous, however, it pours out of the jar very, very slowly, but never sits there, goes flat quickly, not exotropic. But I digress. Is that us now? Return a new Kleenex. The miracle invention. Excuse me, I meant to say tissue. Forgive me, Kimberly Clark. I shall call it a tissue. You see, 
Well, you know, calling it a Kleenex is a compliment, so you cannot hold me wrong. Of course we think of Kimberly Clark. We think of tissues. But I still would say Scotch tape, you see? Scotch brand tape is what you are supposed to say. But I just call it Scotch tape because I am a sinner, you know. But I digress again into something not worth discussing. The density distribution of the zero point field around a photon can be described as follows, where this is the backbone of the photon, this is the radius of the photon, see? and this is the angle of the photon. But do not worry, we will not do equations. We are only drawing a two-dimensional slice. Because it is the same when you rotate it around. So we needn't discuss the theta. Theta will sit here and watch a video game, okay? Oh, yeah, he play video game. No, he watch anime. He watch anime. We do not want him to get involved here. We want to keep it simple. So we have... Oh, let us call it R, you know. How far out you go, you know, of the circle. Okay. So what do we mean by density? Well, you know, when you have the tornado flowing, look at the air. What do you see? It will be similar. You know, qualitatively see. Well, there is much, much twisting and maximization of the twisting in this area. Pressure high, but cannot be high here because nothing exists here. No photon has risen. So the pressure, as soon as the tip hits the zero point field which it is flowing through, there will be a pressure increase. Then the pressure will nicely fall off like a sine wave. However, there is going to be a wake, a wake, W-A-K-E, a wake, that goes like that, you see? But it not ending so abrupt, you know, it goes like that. So here is our shape of this is not the streamline of the fairy dust. No, this is the pressure distribution of the zero point field. The PF, P. the pressure of the zero point field at the R theta. Oh, I say I not mentioned theta. Well, you know it got cut off, so I have kept my word. Now, make it clear. Z R theta. Now, mm -hmm. this pressure is the same in the circle around the backbone of the photon. The photon is a tornado of the ether. It is an acceleration. It has a vector field that defines the tornadic flow. You see, if you are a piece of fairy dust, find yourself in one area of the photon, you will flow down towards the direction of the vector, and your acceleration will be one and the same with the absolute value of the acceleration vector at that point of the mm, 
etheric acceleration flux pattern of the photon. The etheric acceleration flux pattern of the photon is a vector, of course, of Z R Z R theta. I am sorry. So this is an A, A vector, oh my, acceleration, must leave a room, you know, for a vector, A, ah, A, perhaps, <laughs> that they'll do. And you ask me why I do not put down? Well, you see, because this particular form, with no subscript, moves along with the photon. So, the universe, in other words, is moving away from the photon, behind it, at the speed of light, see, you see, from the point of view of the photon. So, the photon, or the angel, the angel's point of view, is this equation. Ah, you ask me for the fairy point of view. The fairy hovers, stay still like us, like you and me, we fairies. So, the fairy point of view, instead of wings like this, we got our wings, whoops, was to butterfly wing. Much different, you know. The butterfly wing, you know. The fairy point of view with the beautiful spots. You know. A fairy equal C R theta T. You'll see this makes a difference because it moves in time at the speed of C. You see, the photon goes by. Wave as the photon, wave as the angel. Hello, angel. Cannot see with light waves, you know, because light wave goes at sea, but whatever. You see, this is a fairy, but we are not going to complicate things too much. So before you get all mad, I shall erase the fairy point of view. Just stick with the simple angel point of view. You see, no time. Today, no theta. Today, just a side. Why is the pressure down here? Because you see, the, um, the etheric vector field does not stop at the edge. Only maximum here. But out here, it is sucking in some fluid, which eventually gets sucked in, you see. Every point has a vector, so there is something called a event horizon for the photon, like the event horizon for a black hole, but it is open up. It is the point at which once the zero point field, very dust particle, is caught inside, it will remain part of the photonic core. Let me fix the picture. Let me fix the picture. Well, I am done now. So 
I feel ground some tea. Please have some tea with me. Goodbye, my friend. And do not tell anybody my theory yet. For it is not public. So I will then continue to phase two of our discussion in physics. There we Next, discuss the etheric acceleration flux pattern of electron. So we start by saying that we represent the photon as a vortex in the ether and if we draw it on the complicated scale, like this, with fairy dust trajectories that follow the etheric acceleration flux pattern of the photon, and it happens to flow in a spiral pattern. Faster, faster, faster. First it's slow, then goes faster, 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 faster. There we go. Never faster than C. So we simplify this complicated flow with a pressure distribution, something like this. High, low. This is because where we finish low, and slowly trailed back to zero, zero being the mm, standard pressure. We just call it zero, you know. That is the, like, one atmosphere on Earth. Zero is the natural pressure of the local zero point field next to Earth. We call it zero. Anything under that? Minus, anything above it is plus. Minus would be, of course, more towards the pure vacuum of the void. But the void is very improbable, you see. The void is only a figment of the imagination, you know, because it wants to be something. So it becomes everything like this, you see. Well, this is closer to the void than this. But this is further away. This is more dense. Because you see, there is density here because of the increased gravity in the point of the light. You see, this is a plot of pressure versus distance z. z. This is the pressure. Whereas this is the actual photon superimposed upon the axis. From the angel point of view, the angel point of view, right? She sees that direction, you see. This is the back of her head. And this is her halo and her two wings. We do not show her front view yet, maybe later. For the experts, the mature adults, etc., etc., etc. Well, for now, we want to simplify this. Did I explain? The high pressure means more mass, more gravity. Why more gravity, you ask? Because inside the big vortex of the photon is an infinity of little vortexes everywhere in the zero point field at all sizes and all frequencies everywhere. So if they are everywhere, they are like the photon twisting and pulling in the fluid into the center of the spine as it twists Faster, 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 still mathematically faster. 
but only to approach C from our point of view. Of course, to the photon it appears to be infinite. But is that is another lecture. He was oh. So we have a lot of little twirls inside. Inside here of the photon because they come in from all around and they concentrate here. Just like in a black hole, you know how everything concentrates in the black hole. I do lecture on black hole. It is not a singularity, no. Like a photon, like an electron. It goes in a circle like a donut or a pig or an angel's halo or a dolphin's bubbled ring. Well, so if there are many bubbly rings inside this, that will give a lot of gravity. Inside there, more still. Inside there, more still. As the universe. If we add them up with a uh, limit as number of scales approach infinity, we get a number. A number. Does it matter if it's real or not? It is a conceptual number. Imagine the number exists. We call it density of the zero point field. Mm -hmm. As inertia, because there are is the equivalent of many donuts spinning and spinning and spinning in all directions, x, y, z, all size scales too. So this all makes fun big dots. Anyway, the small ones add up to make the density the density of this is the density of all the smaller universes up to the size, you see? So minus infinity to this size, you see? Well, there is an equal and opposite outward flow, of course, adds up again, but we are not going to discuss that in there. That comes later, but it's obvious, you know, got to have The abbreviation for a light photon is that this one photon, one photon, with this pressure wave, this pressure wave of the, the density wave of the zero point field, and this is the shape of the overall fairy dust look like tornado. There is a event horizon, something that comes out of the tip like that. Very advanced, very advanced. But it is easy to see without the map. Easy to see without the map. So no worries. Now we will continue with a toroid. A toroid. You must change glass. Very warm today. Yeah. I'm going to change the glass. Imagine such a photon is in the middle of one of the many Big Bangs that happen. So our Big Bang has a lot of photons that are formed and a lot of curvy space-time, if I may use the word. Curvy space-time, warped space-time. Lots of gravity, bending of trajectories, a lot of acceleration and all turbulence, you see. What you get is something bends the space and makes the photon 
bent around. What does he see? For at this point he's exploring the universe, looking at everything but himself. But now the photon views himself and is quite mesmerized. He stares at himself. He enters his own core of being and becomes like Escher's drawing. The snake flows inside of his own tail. <laughs> of course, most people do this as the head, but I tell you, no, this is the head. It goes inward forever and ever and ever. So the mathematical pattern of the photon shall be superimposed on itself in a circle. And we can say that an even number of wavelengths fit in one circumference of the circle. Well, an integer number of the half wavelength will fit inside here. So half wavelength or one whole wavelength or two whole wavelengths or 1.5 wavelengths, etc. So, Geon, you can call it a Geon if you want, but I do not agree with Wheeler's Geon because I cannot find his literature. It is impossible to obtain that book, but it must be something like lambda equals in something like that. It is string theory. It matches string theory anyway. It matches string theory. You take the light wave and you make it bend upon itself like an Ouroboros matches string theory mathematically. I may be first to show this, but it is um, a stable configuration of the photon. Needs an input energy, say the Big Bang, some other explosion can make mass. Harder to make mass than making it light from mass. Make light from mass? Just watch anything radioactive. You will be making it turn into light by watching it. So whatever. Well, maybe God made it that way. So our photon starts off here, flows, sees his tail, then he goes around and around. This disappears into himself. And we must now draw the new entity. What once <coughs> was a light wave is now a frozen light wave. A frozen light wave superimposed upon itself. Of course, it closes off rather gently. We did not draw it that way. Now, if we simplify this to look like this, or we could draw it like a bagel. Give a little shading, you know. Or we could draw it like this. View. Well, that is a photon. No, no, no. This is a photon. This is an electron negative. 
So let's just say this is clockwise. And let's just say this is clockwise. Clockwise. Okay. See how there's also a matching somewhere around there. Counterclockwise photon, counterclockwise electron. Yeah. There. So this becomes this, and this can potentially become this. Same energy levels. Only thing is if it takes energy to close it, since the electron will have this energy, plus the energy it takes to bend it in the shape. Then it unbends, it will release the extra energy in some form. Whether it is a mass particle, a bunch of mass particles, and or photons, for example, and even static etheric flux patterns of static, similar to waste heat or similar to the static on a radio station. Well, so we will now summarize our findings. The photon, the electron, we draw like the photon that finds its own tail. And makes sort of a toroid. A toroid. All right, this is an electron. Proton. And C, velocity C. Both have their own acceleration pattern. This one floats still in space comparatively to this, which moves at the speed of what appears to us to be C, due to how our eyes calibrate to the same zero point field that the light wave is going in. If the zero point field changes, well, I only see the light in the area of my own eyes, so never mind. Okay, notice I did not say proton, I said photon. Electron is a polar, subatomic particle, polar in a certain way that it has a certain direction that the ether flows into it and if it is a clockwise it would flow like this and so on and so forth clockwise then it would flow in from the top out from the bottom and the side view would be something like that, something like that. You see? Circulate. Also, a human being has a similar field around them, like a big enter to like angel wings outside of so, you see this has one level of gyroscopic spin, this has one, two levels of gyroscopic spin, therefore this one has more concentrations of gyroscopic spin, this one is one level spread out, this one is two levels concentrated in it. Very few blank lengths, very, very small. So it is concentrated etheric acceleration flux, 
accelerating into the electron before it goes around and around forever. Because of the high rate of concentration of the gravity or the etheric acceleration, same thing, flowing inward, it is considered very dense. You can measure it. It has inertia resistant to movement because these flows are so happy the way they go. It takes a while to move it, you know, like spinning bicycle tire, hard to move, you know. Gyroscopic energy, you know, where the photon only has one direction and that direction and around one angular momentum vector and one forward. This has many vectors. Whatever. So, I think I will stop here. Next lecture, we will pick up on more levels of gyroscopic inertia. We will talk about dark energy and dark matter, what they are, and sooner or later we must cover hmm, the expanding universe, of course, yes. yes, yes. Finally, anti-gravity. Do I dare talk about such a topic? Probably not. Probably not. Perhaps Dr. Jung can talk about it with you. Uh, thank you very much, my friends. I leave this up so we see where we left off. Next time we talk. Peace to you, my friend. Keep it a secret. It is not yet public.